Night or day, Singapore is open. Join me on Pan Asia as I embark on a gastronomic adventure. I'll savor a popular breakfast treat, tour the city by air, water, and on foot, and cook a Singapore seafood feast. This is just a small example of the food opportunities that await us in Singapore. Hi, I'm Sean Richards, and my tour of this city is all about food. Singapore is made up of an exotic blend of people from all corners of the globe, and this diversity is well represented in the endless variety of intoxicating food. This truly is a gourmet's paradise. So before we start tasting, let's take a look at the map. Located in Southeast Asia at the southern tip of the Malay Peninsula, Singapore sits just 85 miles north of the equator between the Indian Ocean and the South China Sea. It consists of the diamond-shaped Singapore Island and about 60 little islets. The capital, Singapore City, covers the entire island. From breakfast to a late night snack and every meal in between, I'll eat my way through Singapore. I'll taste the famous kaya toast. I'll sample a vegetarian meal that's supposed to taste like meat. I'll visit a food court that's a virtual melting pot of flavors. And finally, we'll spice things up with some traditional Peranakan fare. Singapore, the Lion City, is the world's busiest port and a fast-moving modern metropolis. It's overwhelming from the outside. You've got to get in closer for a true picture of the place. I start in Chinatown since three quarters of the people are Chinese. Malays make up 15% of the population, Indians 3%, and the rest come from all over the world. I'm making my way through outdoor cafe and market lined streets. Souvenir vendors sell trinkets to tourists. There's so much to see, but first, I'm hungry. I've met my friend Augustin for breakfast, and he's promised to introduce me to a Singapore morning favorite, Kaya Toast. And this little restaurant is apparently the place to try it. Well, definitely the toast with the yeah, kaya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A coffee. Yeah, coffee with, with me. I'll have milk. Yeah. Two coffee. Two, two coffee, coffee with me. Uh, two toast. Two toast, yes. And uh, so for it, we'll try one the egg. Coffee. One order of it. One order. Yeah. One order. Yeah, thank you. In the hectic kitchen, slices of brown bread are being turned on a grill, toasted to a golden brown. The next step is to spread the toast generously with a coconut and egg jam that is dangerously rich and sweet. Then, thick slabs of butter are pressed into the sandwich where they begin to melt into a creamy center. I'm not even going to think about the calories. Breakfast wouldn't be complete without thick Javanese coffee sweetened with condensed milk. A little water added so it doesn't blast off on impact. And there you have it, a typical Singapore morning meal. We add the soy sauce and, and white and, uh, pepper. And black pepper. Okay, you add what you like. And uh, a little bit of the splashes, just for flavor, lettuce, I guess. And the white pepper. White pepper. White pepper. 
and uh, just chill it. Oh, you just kind of break it up? Yeah, break it up, stir it up, yeah. It looks like egg soup. It looks really... <laughs> and uh, next, what is the deal? Just sip it. I think you should eat the eggs and I'll eat the toast. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Please, sir. Mm. Like it? Mm. Oh, it's so creamy and rich and sweet. It's utterly decadent. Yes, kaya all about richness, huh? Is that what kaya means? Yep. Kaya is a Malay word which means richness. Kaya means richness. Mm -hmm. And I can definitely see why. I love it. I can get very used to this. And I love this place. Fruits and vegetables, meat, fish and poultry, live animals, rice, herbs and spices, a profusion of the finest, freshest foods available. Chinese, Malay and Indian ingredients overlap from brightly colored stall to stall. And that fits perfectly with tonight's meal, a Peranakan dish that combines these three cuisines. We just put garlic and saute, but being Peranakan, we like it spicy. We have put all our like, chili, chili and 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 dried prawns. Dried prawns. Mm. And coconut milk. And coconut milk? Is that's that what right. we're going to do today? Yes, that's Ooh, right. That sounds good. Okay. The stall. This is Vivian from the Blue Ginger Restaurant, and we're here picking out our ingredients for the dishes we'll be cooking today. Well, and this is our kangkong? Yeah, this is okay. what we'll be cooking. Yeah, what are you doing? Beautiful. Nice yeah. big bunch. Crunchy. And we need to get a lot, don't we? Because yeah, green we... vegetables shrink when that's you cook right, them. That's right. Yeah. But when we cook these. Alright, this is one of my favorite stalls. They've got lots of prawns of varieties and of different sizes. It looks too. like these prawns come from all different yeah. areas. Indonesia. Some are fresh water, some are fresh water, water. exactly. Uh, I like that Ocean one. Ocean water. Those ones? The Where are they one. from? Let's Thailand. Go. Thailand. They are called tiger prawns and this is from Indonesia. They are a very good size and okay. they are really, really fresh. They're a good medium size, aren't that's they? If right. they're too big, they don't have as much flavor and the meat is tough. Ah, that's right. So a medium size is I like this size and yeah. they are real fresh. Ah, oh, this is a uh, the blue ginger. The restaurant is named this after is the, the name of the restaurant. restaurant. And he's got a very good smile that you took. There you are. Oh, wonderful. Okay. What a beautiful, smooth, waxy texture. That's right. Mm, a beautiful perfume. That's right. Lovely fragrance. Yeah. And it doesn't smell like ginger. It smells no. like a flower. That's More right. perfume. That's right. It's called mm -hmm. blue Lovely flower. aroma. Uh -huh. I taste but it. Just Do you cook called... with it too? Yeah, yeah. We, we boil it in our, in our gravy. You boil it and throw it in your dishes? Yeah. Well, Vivian, now that we've got our most important ingredients, uh -huh. I'm going to go around and sample some more of Singapore. And then I'll meet you back at the restaurant. All right. Have fun. Okay. Okay, bye. Food, food, and more food. Next on Panasia. The Singapore River was once the lifeline of the city. This is where the first immigrants scratched out a scanty living. But over time, it was transformed from that tiny fishing village to a vast seaport. But every now and then, I get a glimpse of yesterday. Look at this incredible spread. A carnivore's dream, a vegetarian's nightmare, or the other way around. Dr. Ho of the Southeast Asia Hotel has invented vegetarian dishes that look and taste like meat. Can you tell me the process, how this is made? Okay. Um, made from bean curd. Made from bean curd. Yes. Aren't these all made from bean curd? No. Not everything? No. Oh, okay. Some of them are from gluten, some okay. are from vegetables. Wonderful. And then you season them to taste like, accordingly yes. to what meat they're supposed to represent. Right. Is this the chicken? Bean curd. But the seasoning is different. Different seasoning yeah. for the chicken. Yeah. This is incredible. It looks exactly like barbecued pork that you see hanging in the window of a Chinese restaurant. This is a vegetarian's paradise. Let's dig in. Let's dig in. Why Absolutely. You try? Yeah. This is the chicken breast. It looks exactly like a nice slice of chicken. That's very authentic. Mmm. Smells good. Mmm. And it tastes just like chicken. <laughs> it's time to stop by Chef Vivian's restaurant, The Blue Ginger, to start preparing tonight's meal.
All right, well, we're ready to start cooking our vegetable dish, mm -hmm. which is our can kong. Yes, right. Can kong, okay. And how will we prepare it? Uh, we are doing kang kong lemak. Kang kong lemak. And what uh, does lemak mean? Lemak means uh, it's rich in coconut and chili. Rich in coconut? And then okay. Then there's also another meaning to it. <laughs> that if you say a person is, you are lemak means you are cheeky. Really? Okay, perfect. So it's a cheeky dish, kind of combining the two meanings. Yeah, but today we have the dish is a bit spicy. A little bit spicy and a little bit rich. Sounds good. All right. Okay, uh, so what are our ingredients? Basic uh, ingredients are mm -hmm. uh, shallots. Okay, shallots. Uh, blachan. Blachan. What's blachan? Uh, shrimp paste. Shrimp paste. Do you mind if I pick this up? Whoa, sure <laughs> does. That's a very strong. Mm. Okay. Kind of good though. Uh-huh. And these? These are candle nuts. It enriches your food. Nuts and that enriches the food. Yes. Uh, if you are overseas, you don't have candle nuts. Mm -hmm. I think you can use macadamia nuts. Macadamia nuts. Okay. So an oily nut. That's, that's right. That's rich in flavor. That's right. Okay. And this is dry chili. So you take all of these ingredients mm -hmm. and mix them together and form this lovely paste. Yes. Sugar. Sugar. Salt. Salt. And this is dried shrimp. Dried shrimp. All okay, right. is this just to taste and garnish? Yes. Peanut oil, okay. That's our right. coconut milk. milk. And here we have our kang kong, of course, yes. our main ingredient. Yes, it's a crunchy type vegetable. Mm -hmm. You can substitute it for spinach. Spinach, I was going right. to say, it would be great with spinach, wouldn't it? Then what you do is, when the pan is hot, mm -hmm. you heat up your oil. Okay, so you heat up the oil first. That's right. Okay, in the okay. hot pan. All right. This is our shrimp, which has been in the process. The okay. dried shrimp? That's right. Okay, so you're frying those. Ooh, yeah. Nice little sizzle. That's right. <laughs> and you have to fry it till you have that fragrance. Mm, you can smell it already. Mm-hmm. Mm. Again. Lovely smell. It's called rumpa. 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 Rumpa is the ingredient that's mixed. Okay, so oh. it means like a, a blend that's right. of ingredients, or does it mean a paste? That's right. Okay. Now, can you get the flavor? Alright. Mmm. Okay. Then what you do is it's really spicy. That's right. Be careful. Mm -hmm. And coconut. Of milk course. Milk. This is all happening so fast, isn't it? Yeah. Come on. Down they win. Alright, stop. Alright. Oh, that looks beautiful. All Lovely. Right. When it's done, mm -hmm. uh, you put in your Evening. Okay, yes. here I'll let you do that. All right, the sugar, you like sweet, you put more. You don't like it, you just use less. And then, of course, salt. Don't use too much salt because the shrimp is salty. Fabulous. It's done. I can't believe how quick and easy that was to make. So? Well, it gives me more time to explore the city. Okay. So that's what I'll do, and then I'll come back and we'll make our prawns. All right. Okay. Bye. Bye. Have a good time. Thanks. Up next on Panasia, a bird's eye view. The distinctive towers of the Singapore skyline can best be seen from the top of Mount Faber. I'm delighted that the way to get there is by cable car. Always exciting. My friend Mohammed is joining me to the summit. As promised, the view is incredible. As we glide through the air, we have a panoramic landscape of the harbor, the city, and all the surrounding islands. Now that I've been traveling its streets, the city doesn't look so daunting, just clean and lovely. I'm visiting Singapore's opulent Chinatown Heritage Center to discover some of the city's Chinese history, dating back almost 200 years. Because the story of Singapore is the story of many mutually enriching cultures living side by side, I'm not surprised that there's a Malay dance troupe performing here today. I love the overall effect of hypnotic percussion, traditional instruments, and brilliant costumes. Malay dance is more than mere entertainment. 
in both the secular and sacred worlds, it's used to tell stories, offer social commentary, and of course, celebrate. Because it's so close to the equator, night falls fast in Singapore. I'm bedazzled by the neon lights of the Lao Pisat Market, a popular gathering place for family and friends. It's fun watching food vendors pan flames grilling seafood treats for snackers who can't wait till dinner. But I'm in the mood for something cold and sweet. This might look like an ice cream sundae, but the only thing that's similar about it is that it's frozen. This is an ice kachang. It's a mound of shaved ice covered in multicolored sweet syrup, and inside is sweet corn, beans, jelly, and water chestnuts. We'll give it a try. Yum! This is good. The almost ice cream has made me crave something that tastes like home. I asked for carrot cake and this is what I got. The only thing similar about this to the carrot cake that I know is the name. This is the Chinese version and it's fried eggs and white carrots. And I didn't even know there were white carrots. But it's really good. Okay, now I'm on a mission for some recognizable food. I found something I'm familiar with, tandoori chicken. I'm not sure that I'll need anything else to eat, but I'm going to hang around the market for a little while longer, if just for the company. Vivian at the Blue Ginger restaurant and we're ready to start making our sambal prawns. That's right. Which is a typical Peranakan dish, I understand. Uh -huh. But what makes it Peranakan? Well, uh, we use uh, this rumpa. This is a basic rumpa for all, uh, what should I say, Peranakan uh, dishes. Okay, so we have our basic rumpa. That's right. Okay. And what's inside of this again? We had dry chili. Dried yeah. chili. We had the shrimp paste. Shrimp paste. The kettle duck. Candle nut. And the shallots. And the shallots. That's right. Okay. And as you were saying, you can add things to yes. this paste if you want to change the flavor a little That's bit. That's right. You change the flavor. You add a little bit of like turmeric, mm -hmm. uh, lemongrass, the langa. You play with all that. You get different tastes. And this the is big onions. onions. That's right. The Just big white onion. Big white onion sliced. Mm -hmm. Here. That's the tamarind juice. Tamarind juice. How do you get the juice? Well, it comes in a big block. What you do is you take a bit and you soak it in water. Soak it in water. You squeeze it and mm -hmm. you strain it. Squeeze it, strain it, and then you're left with the juice. Yes, right. Do you mind if I try it? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Oh, <laughs> it's very sour and very tangy. Okay. <laughs> and here we have oil and some lovely grated carrots. Is this still right. inside the dish? Yes, uh, this is just for garnishing. Just for garnishing. And we've chosen carrots because of this color. And here sugar. is sugar. Salt. Salt, just to season. Yes. Okay. And of course, our gorgeous black tiger prawns. Yes, we bought this morning from the market. That's right, our very exciting trip to the market. Mm -hmm. So they're very fresh. And we're ready to start cooking. When the oil is hot enough, we are adding our onion. Okay, so first we saute the onions. Yeah. Just until they're soft and translucent. Yes, we don't want it to be overdone. No. Okay, then we add in our prawns. Okay. And you can see them changing color so That's right. quickly. That's right. It's amazing how fast because they Because the cook. oil is hot. And I like to put uh, the, the prawns first to get the wok smell. Ah, uh, so the wok enhances the smell yeah. and the flavor of the prawns. Then I add in the rumpa. Okay, your rumpa. Nice, generous topping. Yes. Give me the tamarind juice. Tamarind juice. Mm -hmm. A little tangy, sour taste. Yes, right. Mmm. Lovely, interesting, complex aroma, isn't it? Yeah. Can I have sour the salt and, and sugar? Right. Salt and sugar. Oh, this is the sugar. Okay. Matter. Salt, please. Does the sugar balance out the sourness of the yes, tamarind? It balances it 
and get a nice taste. Get a nice taste. Mm -hmm. That's all done. You're done? Yeah. My goodness, you're the quickest cook in the East. Well, <laughs> I have the rumpa done first, that's why. <laughs> that's right. Well, I just cannot wait to try them. All right, I'll dish out for you. Gorgeous. A beautiful dish. Yeah, I think it tastes nice too. I'm sure it will. <laughs> Up next on Panasia, sampling the bounty of Singapore. Look at this. Oh, oh these are so beautifully presented. All the bright colors. Oh, thank you. Stunning. Nice work. You love Pranakan yeah, dishes? Yeah, they're very similar to Malay or Indonesian dishes. Okay. This is very rich in coconut milk. Rich in coconut milk. You can't ever go wrong with that flavor, can you? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I don't think you would ever have to cook at home if you lived in Singapore because there's restaurants everywhere and there's whole streets of food and food courts and any, absolutely any flavor that you crave, any cultural food that you are feeling like, it's just, it's there, it's available. If you love food, you're in the right place. Oh, I certainly am. <laughs> If you want to have a gourmet paradise of your own, these dishes are simple to make and absolutely delicious. Here are the recipes. For Chef Vivian's Chinese greens and coconut sauce, blend the shallots, shrimp paste, nuts and chilies until smooth to make the spice paste. Next, saute the dried shrimps in hot oil for half a minute. Add a heaping tablespoon of the spice paste and saute for one minute. Now add the greens, substituting spinach if you like, and continue to saute for another three minutes. Mix in the coconut milk, sugar, and salt, and it's ready. For the sambal prawns, saute the onions in oil to a light brown. Add the prawns and saute until partially tender. To this, add a tablespoon of spice paste and let the prawns cook for two minutes. Now, add the tamarind juice and cook until done. Add sugar and salt and mix well. Serve with rice. Well, I want to make a toast to you both. I've had an incredible time in Singapore. Fabulous city. And thank you for teaching me how to cook this endangered cuisine. What a treat. Oh, I'm glad you like it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Oh, thank you. And showing me around the town. It is my pleasure. Huh? Yeah, you must go. Beautiful. Yeah.